Right. <coughs> okay, welcome to 3D Not 2D. My name is Nemanja Sekulic and today we will start with our first Blender lesson for beginners, where you will learn how to create this really cute rocket. A bunch of you guys know me probably from my other channel, Nemanja Sekulic channel, where I'm teaching people Photoshop and photo manipulations, how to create amazing artworks using Photoshop, but also there I'm using a lot of 3D elements and because a lot of people there asked me to create a channel to teach them a blender. Actually, not to create a channel, but to teach them a blender. I decided to create a new channel just to split these two things apart from each other. And this channel is 3D, not 2D. And we will start with the blender. So this is how the blender looks when you first time open it. And first time you have also this. Let me show you really quickly. So key map you will have this window popped in the middle right here and Blender will ask you for the first time what do you want to uh, use to select objects, left mouse button or right mouse button. Whatever you choose is perfectly okay. There are two different schools in Blender. A lot of people using right mouse button for selection. So to select something, go with the right. And with the left is action button so you can uh, do a lot of things with the left button, but with the right is to select. So they're, they're splitting selection and action. So whatever you choose, it's perfectly fine. There is a difference. Uh, the left mouse button will work like you used to use left mouse button and then right mouse button will be right uh, the menu, like you used to use a mouse. But the other way, the right mouse button, like I like to use Blender, separate the selection from action. So you will use right mouse button in order to select things and the left mouse button will be for the action. So for example, to move uh, the 3D cursor anywhere on the screen and so on and so forth. So there are small difference between using certain operations here in Blender uh, with left and right mouse button, but whatever you choose, you will stick with that probably. And also if you choose right mouse button like I'm doing here to select, then W on a keyboard will be your menu like on the right mouse button. So this is it. And I always like to use keyboard shortcuts, which I advise you to do too, because in that way you will uh, work faster. So this is the 3D viewport. This screen right here is called 3D viewport and it's called 3D because you can pan in a 3D space all the way like spherical 360 degrees around the objects. And in order to pen, to move in 3D space, you will need a mouse. So it's not necessary if you're using laptops. I'm currently working on MacBook Pro M1 Max. So if you're using laptops, you can use trackpad also, but it's much harder. And also you will need uh, sit in the numpad keyboard right here because you will use these keys a lot to move through the certain orthographic views, which I will uh, cover shortly. But if you don't have that, you can go edit preferences, go to uh, input and go to emulate numpad. And then instead of having this numerical keyboard here, you can use regular numbers at the top of your keyboard in order to use these options, which I will cover uh, shortly. So this is how you can do it. Also, uh, you can use this thing right here, this gizmo in order to pan and uh, walk through the scene if you are not using a mouse with the scroller. So scroller is so handy because you will use it a lot for so many things in Blender. My recommendation is if you want to learn Blender and play and have a lot of fun in Blender, invest in any kind of mouse. It doesn't need to be expensive mouse, any mouse, as long as it has a scroll wheel and that's it. So in order to move, to pan around the objects, press and hold scroll, scroll wheel and that's it. If you press and hold shift and scroll wheel, you can pan like that. If you press control or command on a Mac and scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. So this is it, shift and control with the scroll wheel, pan and zoom and just scroll wheel, it will go like that. Also, you can use this alternatively. So to zoom, to pan, and uh, this is to go into camera view. So here, let me show you. we have a camera. Camera is looking at the cube. And if you want to go into camera view, you can press here 
and see what camera is seeing and go one more time to exit or press zero on a Merrick keyboard and go into camera view, which I always use. So zero in and out. Also, uh, there are a few other views. So this is, you can see here front view. This is top view. This is right view. This is bottom view and so on and so forth. In order to go into these views, numerical keyboard, really handy. One is front view, three is right view, seven is top view. Control one is opposite back view. Control three is left view. Control seven is bottom view. And uh, zero is camera view. So in order uh, to go into these views also fast, there, there is another way, Alt. Press Alt or Option on the Mac and just go up and down for the bottom and top, left, right, it will just snap into these views. So this is alternatively way if you want to use it like that. I just used to use these numbers. Sometimes I'm using this, but rarely. So all these views, front, top, left, bottom, etc., are called orthographic views and these views doesn't have a depth. You don't have any kind of depth. Also, you can, you can enter the orthographic view by pressing five on the keyboard anytime and you can see right here, there is no depth. And also this gizmo right here is for the same action. Okay, now that we cover how to move through the 3D workspace, now let's cover how to move 3D objects into works, in the workspace. So select the object and on the left side here, you have this menu. In order to hide this menu for, I don't know what reason, I, I never did that, but Control or Command T is, no, just T, sorry. T is to hide this side menu. I don't know why would you do it, but this is it. I, I'm using T shortcut for something else. You will see that later. So the first icon here is to basically select things. Mostly use this box selection. The second icon is uh, related to 3D cursor. We will skip it for now. The third icon is to move. So you can click it and move this along the axis. So we have Y, X and Z axis. So this is X, red axis. This is green is Y and the blue is Z axis. So 3D workspace. Also, this is for rotation, you have this gizmo, so you can rotate along the X axis, along the Y axis, and along the Z axis. And also if you want to rotate it freely, just click anywhere in between and you can rotate it freely however you want. Also, we have the scale here, so you can scale the object along the axis however you want. Or you can scale the complete object just by going somewhere in between and just scale on in the same time simultaneously on all three axes. So this is it. And also here you can have all the gizmos active so you can scale and move and rotate in the same time. I never use this, to be honest. There is a faster way to, let me just reset this. There is a faster way to do this. So let's go back to this uh, box selection. And uh, that that's to use keyboard shortcuts. So select the object, G is for moving freely, press G and X, it will snap to only X axis, press G and Y, Y axis, press Z, it will go to Z axis, press escape, it will go back to default if you didn't move it. So R is for rotation, exactly the same freely, X is for X axis, Y, uh, Y, okay, and Z, and this is it, this is how you move it. And also S is for scale, so scale everything in the same time, X scale it on X, Y scale it on Y and Z on Z axis. So this is it. It's much faster, more precise and it's more handy later in future. You will see that. Also on the right side here we have like layers in Photoshop. It's so intuitive you will learn in, in the go. And also here there are a lot of tools that we will cover also later. We have this basically render uh, render scene tool where you, you can choose between EV and cycles render engines. Render engines are basically the engines that will render out, that will gather all the information, the geometry, the lights, the materials, all the things and basically create a snapshot of that, create like photo of what are you seeing in the screen. It will calculate everything and different render engines calculate things differently. So Eevee 
you can say this is a real-time render engine and uh, is the fast way to do things in uh, Blender. Also, it's amazing and I use it occasionally, but mostly I'm using Cycles and Cycles is photographic, photorealistic render engines that will better calculate the light, bounces, all the things and it will make more photorealistic results like reflection, shadows, and so on and so forth. And also with the cycles, you can choose to use either CPU or GPU. And if you have nice GPU card on your computer, always use GPU because it's better and faster. And there are a lot of things here. Don't be overwhelmed with this. We'll, you will learn this on the go. When you need certain options, you will learn them. Don't just go through all of that and learn like that. Also, we have some materials here that we'll use in this uh, series of tutorials. Also the word materials, object properties, this uh, gear icon is modifiers and so on and so forth. Let's don't bother with this. Also one important thing here is that in Blender you can easily split views in order to do things easier. So if you go to this corner, for example, you will see the cross sign, click and drag, and you can split this into however you want windows and for example you want this window to be top view and this you can freely rotate and see and you're modeling something in top view but you can see here how that affects different angles that's amazing or here you can choose instead of uh, here instead of a 3d viewport you can choose for example shading and you can have materials here and tweak materials of the model let me quickly show so tweak the color, tweak whatever you want, and you can see here in the perspective view how this how this looks. And uh, like that, it's really easy to, to work with. Also, by default, we have another window here that you can, again, put it into Composer or whatever you want here, or maybe to 3D viewport and some other view, maybe side view or whatever. And like that, you can really easily uh, split the scenes. In order to remove any of these you can go back to this plus icon and just move it to the left and also this plus icon and move it move it up and down now now i made a mess so move it up and then down like that so move it opposite and then down so here move it up and then down but i don't want i, I like this view to have it always here so i like to have shading here and also here at the top you can see we have different views this is wireframe view this is X-ray view, you will see that later, you can see through the object. If you have multiple objects here, for example, like this, you can go and uh, see through the objects. Like this, you can just see one object. Also, uh, this is a shading view. And if you, in any view, go to the X-ray, you can again see through the objects. This is really handy in a lot of situations. And also here we have a material preview window where you can preview the materials and reflections and everything. And also this is a render view where you can see how the render will look. This is cycles, this is EV, and they're giving different results with which we will cover later. Now that we know the basic here, the basic of the interface, let's start with next lesson and let's start modeling this cute rocket.